Hi everyone, I'm Lindsay Bradfield from Secured Signing. I'm responsible for our new business development and as such hear firsthand a lot of the security questions from our corporate and government clients around the use of digital signing. What we wanted to raise awareness of in this webinar is the fact that in addition to the security of any digital signing software provider themselves, there are a number of additional verification options that you as end users and your companies can apply that will make the digital signing process even more robust. Um, so just first some housekeeping, your lines are on mute, at the end we'll have some Q&A time so if you've got questions pop them through on the um, chat panel. I've got some of our team supporting for those so they can be technical questions too and we'll um, have them join at the end um, and we'll be sending you a recording of the webinar afterwards as well. Cool. Um, so. This is me and my details. <laughs> um, but in terms of what we're going to cover um, over the next 40 minutes or so, um, we're going to go through what the key aspects are to a valid digital signature. Um, I'll go through what the risks of digital signing can be and the ways that you can verify identities and reduce the risk. Um, we'll go through a really brief demo um, showing some of the functionality to reduce risk and add further verification and then we'll cover the Q&A at the end. Um, and just a little bit of background about secured signing before we kick into it. Secured signing is a digital signing and online forms cloud platform. We've been operating since 2010, um, so client signing for um, over 10 years. We're headquartered out of New Zealand, home of the America's Cup, um, and we're a global business with key operations in New Zealand, Australia, USA, and the UK, um, and we've actually got clients in 30 countries around the world as well. So I've um, been doing this for a long time. Cool. So um, there's three key aspects to a valid digital signature and they're typically referred to as the three I's. Um, the first is the identity of who is signing and that is strongly linked to the email address um, matched up with the name, date and time and device. The second aspect is the intent to sign, and that's what we'll be focusing a lot on today, is how do you verify who was signing and their, their intent. Um, thirdly, um, the third eye is the integrity um, of the signature on the document um, and the fact that the document hasn't been tampered with, so it's a, a valid process. Cool. Um, and now just to give a little bit more context around this, um, you probably hear of e-signatures. So e-signatures is the broader category um, for um, signing um, and it is less robust than digital signatures, which is a subcategory. So if you look at these two images on screen, the one on the right with the blue um, signature, that's an electronic signature. So that's one of those ones that where you draw your signature on a piece of paper, upload it, and then you copy and paste it into a Word document. Um, so it's not robust because you can copy and paste that signature anywhere um, and you could alter the document text after that's been placed as well. So it's not giving you that security and robustness around how valid that signature would be. So the signature on the left is a digital signature. So in that whole box with um, John Testament's name, um, it's his signature, it's showing his name printed out and the date and time stamp of when that signature signature was applied. So all of those things together have sealed onto that document to form a valid um, binding signature. Now we use um, public key infrastructure digital signature technology um, and the specific technology we use at Secured Signing is a user-based PKI digital signature 
And what that means is if you have a document with multiple people signing it, um, the moment the first signature is applied, it seals the document so that it can't be um, edited, or if it was, it would invalidate the signatures on it. Um, so it's, it's a really robust process. Um, yeah, so we can talk to you in more detail about that at any time. So in terms of the risk of verifying, um, of not verifying who's signing, your number one risk is fraud. And it's worth pointing out that this can happen in a paper-based process as well. If you've got, if you're a bank with a customer um, signing a document at home on paper, how do you really know it's the person you think it is signing that document anyway? So digital signing provides more audit mechanisms about out, when it was signed um, as part of the audit trail and date stamped into it but of course it's not without its risk as well um, and we saw that put into practice last year there was a court case in Australia called Market Lend versus Blackburn and essentially what happened there was a husband and wife had a business and they borrowed some money from a, a loan company um, the wife was guarantor, apparently. Um, the husband actually um, gained access to her emails and um, digital signing account and um, forged the signature without her consent or knowledge. But um, from the loan provider's um, perspective, they had a valid guarantor signature from the wife. Um, the business went bust um, and so the loan provider went to access the money um, but they were unable to um, get the money from the wife as guarantor because she could prove that she wasn't the one that applied the signature. Um, there were things that could have happened to make that um, whole signing process more robust. For example, no multi-factor authentication was used. Um, if, um, if the husband didn't have access to the wife's phone, potentially that could have been applied. Um, but then that's a risk as well. Often a lot of spouses will have access to um, the phone and email accounts of another. Um, so today we'll talk you through some other options around that as well. Cool. So SMS, um, I just touched on, um, is the first um, and most commonly known and most commonly used option for multi-factor authentication. And the advantage of that is it's got taking you to another device. So if an email was hacked, um, for example, um, you would need to um, access the person's mobile as well. It's giving you a different channel to um, verify your identity. Um, the second um, is ID verification. Um, secured signing offers a really robust process where your signer of a document can upload um, a state um, ID, so such as a driver's license. Our system will verify that the ID isn't a fake ID and then the person will take a selfie um, and there's live um, facial recognition um, matching from the live selfie um, to the ID and only if those um, two pieces match will the signing process continue. So we'll show you um, that today but it's a really robust option for verification. Um, other options are video confirmation and that's um, when you can have a signer um, doing some actions offline um, just picking up their mobile phone um, and the video gets stored with the signed document um, so a lot of our finance company clients use this um, they typically already have client records on file and so when they get the signed document with the video um, embedded with it they check the video likeness for their expectations of what the person looks like and then they release the funds. So um, that's a free service that we offer. And then finally, the fourth option we want to talk about today is video signing. So that's an all-in-one video um, and signing process and it provides evidence of all the different parties in the signing 
process um, who are signing at that point in time. And this is often used for compliance related scenarios. For example, you might have a support person like a lawyer or a, an accountant or some other kind of advisor to support you in a meeting and that's evidence that they were there and participants in that meeting. Cool. Um, so yeah, just to go into the SMS a little bit more, um, so basically um, the, if somebody was going to hack your email, they'd have to hack your phone as well. So the process um, we use for SMS authentication is uh, we would email you a document um, and then within the email is a link. Um, that asks for a code and then that you would be texted to the code on your phone and then have to enter it in to access the document. So that's using those two um, methods together to be able to unlock the document and verify that it is the right person signing. So um, that's very common with our clients. Um, yeah, the, the most exciting in um, my view is our ID verification. Um, so you can see in the screenshot here, um, as part of the signing process, you'd be uploading a copy of your ID um, using both sides, taking a selfie, and it uses facial recognition to match the selfie to the ID. It checks a massive database with over 4,000 government IDs from 200 countries, and there's over 50 forensic tests performed on the IDs in real time. So it's pretty cool. Um, and I guess from an end user perspective, um, it's um, got benefits because it's populating accurate data into your client applications within seconds. That's stuff that you don't have to do manually. Um, so it's saving time, um, adding to your compliance and reducing risk. So you can actually, um, if you've got certain fields that you need to capture um, in a form, for example, um, you can request those specific forms um, are checked on the ID. So first name, last name, that kind of thing. Cool. Um, the third one is video confirmation. So that records the signer at the signature moment. So you can see, I'm going to show you this in real time as well. Um, it'll prompt me for some actions like tilt left ear to the left shoulder. Um, and I take a recording of that and that gets embedded in with the document. Um, yeah, and the beauty of this, it's so easy to set up and it's completely free. And video signing, this is our all-in-one video signing solution. So you don't need a separate video conferencing platform for this. Um, it's all built into the, um, the video signing um, solution. Um, so it's a live real-time signing. Um, all the parties are in the same meeting, signing the document one after another at the same time. Um, so that's um, a very good uh, mechanism to support non repudiation. Um, it's very difficult to deny that you weren't in a meeting when there's a video of you in there signing it at the time. Um, and it's really simple and easy to use and the videos um, are passworded and stored with the document for future access. So a good use case for that might be if you had a, um, a contract that had um, multiple parties involved um, and you knew there might be a potential for a, a legal challenge in years to come. Cool. Now, um, so that's a quick overview about um, our like four key verification options. Um, so what I'm going to show you now is a quick two-minute video of how the ID verification works, and then we'll go through a slightly slower process where I upload a document and show you how you would select the different verification options. And remember, if you've got questions, just pop them into the panel and we can cover it off at the end as well. Cool. Oops. And I will quickly log into my account. Oops.
Cool. All right. So this is the screen when you first log into Secured Signing. Um, as a user, probably the first thing you would want to do is go to this green box and add a document to upload. So you simply browse your um, directory and grab a document that you want to add. Um, and add it in. You could select multiple documents um, and bulk upload or combine them into one if you wanted to as well. Um, also worth pointing out, um, with an integration to another system like SharePoint Online or Salesforce, you could be initiating that signing process directly from that system. So for now, I've uploaded a document and it's given me some nice easy prompts at the start. I could either sign the document myself, invite somebody else to sign, turn it into a template. Um, for example, if it was an um, online form that's going to be accessed by lots of people lots of times, um, or commence the video signing process. I'm going to select invite someone to sign. Cool. So we've uploaded the document. If I look at the um, right side, I can see that it's a three page document and click through to the different pages. On my last page, I can see there's a space for a signature box. Now I follow the red button at the top and add my invitee's signature. So I'm going to get Belinda to sign this document. And because I've used it before, it's automatically populated her first name and last name. And now I'm going to go add. It's at the top, so I drag and drop and I can resize to whatever space I'm working with um, and just pop it in there. If you wanted to add additional invitees, um, that's easy to do as well. Um, we can add them in here just like this. And again, we would drag and drop them in here place them here. You can also um, add a witness really easily. So you can see Richard would have a witness over here. When this gets sent out, Richard would nominate who his witness would be. Now, I'm not going to um, show these for demo purposes, but I just wanted to show you how quick and easy it is to add other people and add witnesses. So um, you can also add an additional form data like drop down lists and um, text boxes um, with validation rules like to make sure it's a valid email address and things like that as well. So, but for today, we're just going to sign this document. Um, now I'm going to hit the next button um, and it takes me to the signing workflow options. Um, now here, um, I've got a drop down of different verification options. So by default, it would send an email with a passcode to access the document. But as we've been talking about these different verification options, um, I could choose SMS or ID verification. Um, as well. You can see once I select ID verification, it brings up some additional options. So if I want the process to continue if the facial match um, doesn't happen or stop, um, I'm just going to focus on for this demo video confirmation. So I'm going to click the video confirmation box. Um, and other things to note, in the background, there's reminders depending on the date you send out, et cetera, as well. And you can edit the invitation email. Um, if we don't, it just goes out with a standard wording. Anyway, so we are showing video confirmation. I'm now going to hit send, and Belinda is going to get an email with um, a request to sign the document. Yes. You, you, send, you send it with ID verification, so? Oh dear. Okay. Yeah, do another one quick. Another okay. one quick. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Thank you. Um, good spot. Um, the perils of a live demo. Okay. So I've got one in my inbox here, and I'll quickly add it. And I'm clicking to the last page, adding my invitee's signature. And resizing it. Oops, sorry. Okay, then next, I'm turning off these options 
um, we're going with a regular email with passcode and video confirmation activated and now I'm hitting send. Right, now I can go back to my documents to see the si signing status. So we were in the inbox before, now we're in the in progress folder and we can see the status of the signing. So we have got multiple people signing, it will show one of three signed, etc. I'm now gonna go into my inbox and open the invitation request. I'll just pull it over so you can see it. So um, this can be um, branded with your own company branding on it. Um, here we've got the passcode 4233, which I need to put into this um, uh, link to access it. Remember, if we had used SMS as a um, form of verification, this code would not go in the email. It would go out separately via text. But for now, we're gonna just pop it in here. Now I'm going to stop sharing my webcam while we do this because um, you'll see a view of my video on the screen anyway. Cool. Now um, with all um, electronic um, signing, um, you get, tick a box to agree to use of electronic records and digital signatures. So I click OK and then I click into here to sign it. Um, the first time you sign, you get this range of options about how you sign. Um, you can select a font to sign. Um, because it's combining with your email address, um, this still forms a valid digital signature. Um, you can draw um, the signature with your mouse if you want if you're talented that way. You can upload your signature if you want a true likeness and you can use your device, so your iPhone or um, iPad, etc., cetera, um, to draw on glass as well. For today, we'll just select this font option and hit sign. And now this is where it's prompting me for the video confirmation. So as part of the signing process, Belinda has been asked by Lindsay to provide video confirmation of identity as part of the signing process. And it's giving me the instruction to record myself making the head movement instructions provided. The video will be saved to the Vimeo platform and password protected. The signed document provides a link um, and the password to view the video. And by recording the video, I acknowledge that anybody with access to the signed document will be able to view the video confirmation of identity and consent to secured signing providing this video confirmation. Right, now we've got the video. Here I am again. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm gonna click the recording to start and it's going to give me a prompt. So I have to blink twice. One, two, and that's my recording. So now I'm gonna submit it and see if that gets approved, it does. And my signature gets applied straight away and the signing process is complete. Now, if I um, jump back into um, my site, now, because I've been logged in as a different user, I'm gonna to have to log in again. Um, but I'll quickly do this. And we can see that that document has now progressed into the signed folder. So you can see it was signed a minute ago and then um, I'll also get a signed copy in my inbox, which will be coming through any moment. When you have a video file attached, it takes a little bit longer than if you um, didn't have a video. So um, if we were doing a regular signing process with SMS or just um, email signing with nothing else, it would be through by now as well. So, um, and if there were multiple people in the signing process, you would see um, it sitting in the in progress tab. Right, now I've got the document through now. 
Um, so what I've got is an email with the audit log of the, or the document log of all the different actions that have taken place. So we know that there was a video action where I had to blink twice um, and I agreed to electronic records and digital signatures. There's a URL and password to access, etc. So all of our signing actions are stored in this audit or document log here. Plus, we have um, the signed PDF document here. So if I jump to the end, we can see the signature in here. If I click over, um, sorry, click into the signature box, it tells me that the signature is valid. Um, if you're a first-time user of secured signing, you would need um, you would have one action before this to um, download or accept the root certificate, um, and then you would instantly be able to validate the signature on every future occasion, like I am right now. Cool. So that's how easy it is to um, run video confirmation. Um, and now I will show you the ID verification video so you can see how that works. So um, same as before, I've had an email invite from somebody to sign a document. This one has a passcode. I click to view and sign, enter the passcode into the document and hit continue. Because ID verification is enabled, it's prompting for my cell phone and it's doing that to drive me to my phone because that has better photo quality for doing the ID verification and selfie match. So I'm entering the code into my phone um, to get access this way and continue the process. So the first thing I'm being asked to do is capture a photo of the front side of my ID and then I also have to capture the back side of the ID. And so once that's captured, it's scanning all the database of IDs to make sure it's not a fake, that it's um, a proper ID. And then it's prompting me to take a selfie um, with my phone that it's going to match to that ID. So um, then it's using facial recognition to check that my live selfie um, matches the ID and I've passed the verification and then it's letting me continue on with the signing process back on my desktop. And again, we're using a font signature there. Cool, signed and dated. And just like that, it's complete. Um, and with the um, signed document, uh, you can have the ID um, embedded in the document, or if you just wanted it as a verification method and didn't want it visible with the document, um, you can deselect that as well, I believe. Cool. So um, those are um, two quick run-throughs of how easy it is to add additional verification to the signing process. Um, so for now, we will kick back to Q&A. So a nice quick demo for you. Um, so send through any questions that you have um, on the chat bar. One question, it's Linda, ask how much is the video confirmation? Oh, the video confirmation is free. Um, so that's a really good value add to get free access to an additional verification option. Mm -hmm. Nice. You you have more questions? Uh, I can see just a minute. Um, oh, yes. Uh, yeah, for it's about uh, the solution is working in in US as well. It's working in in the, we are using a global supplier for IDs, and, and we can we can check more than 4,000 IDs. So many passport, many driver license. In the US, we support in all states and US passport. In Australia, for example, we support in passport, driver license, and Medicare. New Zealand, we support in driver license and ID of is driver license and passport. And uh, driver license, there are many versions, so we support in most of them, or all of them, we can say. Um, um, 
the setting for this process is actually um, quite simple and you just need to enable ID verification and all done for you. Um, we, the ID verification support Asian country as well. So we have in the, we have 200 countries, so just few of them we don't support. Um, um, and also more question coming just a minute. Yeah. Um, um, there's a question um, for ID verification. Do you have your own system or using a third party? Um, so just confirming, we use a third party. We partner with LexisNexis who are ISO 27001 certified. Yeah, um, the, the, sorry, yeah, go ahead. Um, I was just going to move on. Um, so um, just confirming that in the US, there's also a verification option called knowledge-based authentication. Um, and we've got a specific query about that. I might take that one offline, I think, yeah. Yeah, but we support in, KB, we support in KBA. So if, you are, <clears throat> if you're in US, you have another method of authentication. You can use the knowledge-based authentication for identity proofing. So it's a, it's a questionnaire or quiz generate based on the information you type it in in the um, in the form, and then you cool. we auto populate the questionnaire for you. Cool, excellent. And there was a question with ID verification. If the um, selfie and the person, uh, sorry, the selfie and the ID don't match, what happens? Um, so there was an option when you set up the signing process. You can either um, stop the signing process so they won't get access to the document to sign um, or there is an option for you to allow it to continue. I'm not quite sure why you would want it to continue um, if it didn't match because um, that's the strength of the verification is the ability to stop it. The, just to make it more technical point of view, so the, the match you need to get, get a score, let's say the score is 80 points. And the, and the person took a picture, but the score for the matching is 77 or 67. So we want to give you this option to make your decision by yourself if you want to continue or not, because you will get the scoring and you see if the life nets and the scoring is very low, so it's a very, very suspicious. But if it's a, you know, 67 or 76 or whatever, something like that, so you can continue this process because the, you can say the quality of the, pic, of the selfie was not too, not too good, so but it's all, all right for you. You can move it there. Um, um, we have someone asking about the witness. Um, yeah, how do you invite a non-signing witness, um, for example, an attorney supervising notarization of his client? Yeah, so this is a different uh, process. You have a uh, RON, remote online notarization, and the uh, attorney or lawyer or solicitor in our world can be um, a, a guest. So he can be a witness in the in the in the RON session or remote online notarization or video signing. And part of this process, you have ID verification, and the attorney doesn't need to take any any part of this. He just witness or just join in for the meeting, and he can we can see all of them. Oh, and I just wanted to clarify, um, because we've got um, a mix of um, kind of company types and countries on the line, um, in addition to regular digital signing, we can sign documents and forms. Um, in the US market, um, there's an online notarization process. Um, so secured signing has um, a purpose-built um, process for that, um, and you access that through an option um, on our website. Um, and if you were not part of that notarization process and just wanted to invite um, a witness, you would either set up a video meeting if they were a non-signing witness, um, or you would add them as a, a witness into the document if you wanted them to sign. But as I said, the online notary process in the US has its own separate um, custom-built process um, that handles that. Um, I um, can't access all of the questions, so I may need um, 
Mike, if you can access some of those, if I've missed any. No, I, I don't think we have. Uh, I don't. Think. We can we can uh, answer this offline. Uh, so we get we can see all the questions later, and we can answer them one by one, and we reply to you by email. Okay, fantastic, cool. So, um, yeah, so I hope that was helpful. If you're interested in seeing more, we're happy to set up um, custom demos for you. Um, just email the info at securedsigning.com email address. Um, if you're an existing client, we'll get one of our support team to work with you. Um, and if you're a new client, um, we, we'll get somebody else to um, work with you, depending on where you're located. Um, but, yeah, I hope that was helpful. Um, but yeah, there are a lot of steps that you can take individually to increase the um, security robustness of your documents, um, depending on the level of risk involved with them um, and the um, risk appetite of your company. Cool. Thanks for joining today, everyone.